everyone, today I'm going to teach you how to take your Yamaha DTX M12 and connect it to Ableton Live so that you can control drum racks in Ableton Live and even other instruments and all that fun stuff using the Yamaha DTX. So let's dive in. The first thing you're going to need to do is download the driver. You can get it on this website. Um, you're going to have to scroll down and find the operating system that you're using on your system with Ableton Live. Just download that, open it up, run it. Um, once it's done installing, you'll likely have to log out or restart your system. And once that's done, you can dive into the next step. The next step is to plug it in in the back with the power. Plug it directly into an outlet. And then you're going to plug in the USB MIDI cable. Um, you can use a 5-pin MIDI in the back if you want to, it's a little more complicated. The simplest way to connect to Ableton is going to be this USB port right here. Plug one side in here and the other side will go straight to your system. Okay, once you've got your driver installed, you're going to turn it on, the power switch in the back. Then you're going to need to set up MIDI inside the Yamaha DTX so that it can communicate with Ableton. So the way you do that is you'll hit Utility, you'll hit the arrow key to the right, until you land on MIDI, then you'll hit enter, then you'll hit the arrow key again until you land on MIDI in out. Then you'll either leave it where it's at or if it's not on USB you'll use these plus minus signs to move it over to USB. Once you've done that you'll hit store and then enter to confirm. Now the Yamaha DTX should be set up for communicating with MIDI. At this point you can open up Ableton and then you'll look at the top right while you're hitting your Yamaha DTX and you should notice a yellow square lighting up. That just means that Ableton is receiving MIDI signal. If it's not receiving any MIDI signal we're going to go into preferences which is going to be command comma. You want to go into your link tempo MIDI panel under MIDI ports, you'll want to make sure that the in and the out for your Yamaha DTX is checked, and that's going to be the track and the remote. The sync can be helpful, but I found it's not as important for the type of stuff I do, so I leave it unchecked, but you might want to check out the sync as well. While we're here in the preferences, go ahead and go to the audio tab. In the audio tab, we will make sure that we have audio going out from our audio interface, whatever yours is. And since you're setting up drums, something important to keep in mind is the latency. If you look at your buffer size, the more samples you have, the more latency there will be. But the fewer samples you have, the more CPU it'll demand. So I try to go for 64 if I can. 128 is like the most samples before it starts to get almost impossible for me to drum. But it really depends on your system. You can also adjust this driver error compensation. And if you're on a higher sample rate, like 128 or 64 or something like that, this will actually help out with the latency as well if you get it as close to zero as you can. All right, at this point, we can drag a drum rack into a track, arm it so that it knows we're going to communicate with it, and then hit our pad. Now, if you're not getting the right sounds or only a few sounds are triggering, that might be because you're not using a custom within the Yamaha DTX, what we'll do is scroll over inside the Yamaha DTX over to a custom kit, kit, using this plus sign, we'll choose any user kit we want to, and what we can do is map each of these pads to the default drum rack pads in Ableton. And then every time you turn on your Yamaha, you can scroll over to this user pad and it'll be set to the default drum rack for Ableton. Alright, what you'll do is you'll hit the MIDI button. Then you'll hit enter. And scroll over until you have it say MIDI-2 note. And from here you pick the pad that you want. And then you'll move the note over until where you want it assigned. If you look right here, you can see that all of the default kits are assigned to these notes. So we'll simply assign the same note to our pad. We'll do that to every single pad until the layout 
is that of a default Ableton Rack. Then you can just drag on any drum kit that you have or make one yourself and let it rip. If this was helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe.